All right, so uh, today, first thing we're going to go through is some review that will then lead up to the double replacement stuff we are going to talk about today. Um, the reaction type. So this is something we have been working on for the last week or two, starting with the five different kinds of reactions. When we have been predicting products, we've generally been following these two steps. Right? If we predict some kind of reaction will occur, we write down what we think those, yeah, you be in your notes. We write down what those new things are. We sometimes balance those charges, whatever those new compounds are. And then lastly, once we've got all of the things correct in the, re in the reaction, then and only then can we balance the equation overall. And that's where we can just manipulate the coefficients in front of all of the different compounds. So this is not new. This is what we've been doing the whole time. We have resurrected diatomic elements from their resting place sometime in October. And in the case of a diatomic element perhaps being formed, being part of an equation on either side, again, we have to remember that those are going to be diatomic. So as the example from last week, we had in our decomposition reactions, right? If you had a metallic chlorate, that would become a metallic chloride plus oxygen. So in the case of that oxygen, what we're talking about, that would be O2. You had a decomposition reaction of sodium chloride, for example, salt. That would become sodium and it would become chlorine. But again, on that right-hand side of the equation in the products area, that separate chlorine would be Cl2, chlorine being diatomic. We talked about the five different kinds of reactions. You guys have done several worksheets at this point in time to try and identify based on what is going on in any given reaction, how I can identify what that is. Synthesis, decomp, single, double, and combustion. And what we've really been doing for the last week has been chopping off the right-hand side of these equations. Right? The first worksheets we did with this, you guys kind of um, just balanced them and tried to figure out what they were. I think I have a key for that around here somewhere. But then we started doing predicting products, where now you only have the front half of that equation. You only have the first two things on the reactants, or the first thing, and you have to predict what the right-hand side of that equation would look like. For that, we had the general format for these. Again, you don't necessarily need to write this down. You should have all this in your notes already. <clears throat> we talked about how to figure these things out. This purple sheet is your key. This purple sheet has the rules we're going to follow. We're going to talk about that giant awful chart on the back of this here later this morning. But as a, for example, right, single replacement, you can see it up there, you need to use the activity series. That's this table on the bottom of the front page of your purple sheet. So if you have an element being added to some other compound, you need to determine if that candidate metal is above or below it on the activity series to see if you will have something happen. There were some similar rules for decomposition. You need to follow the sheet and figure out what this particular thing will become on the other side. And for synthesis, remember our example were things like hydrogen plus oxygen yields water, sodium plus chlorine yields sodium chloride, and so on and so forth. So we have some examples here. So let's get to what we're talking about today. Double replacement reactions. So in your notes, I want you to put what we have in the first part of this worksheet I handed out. A double replacement reaction occurs, in our case, in three different instances. 
And this is at the top of your purple sheet. This is an ionic reaction on the purple sheet. So I'm not, so here's where you can find this. Obviously you can write it in your notes for now, but where you can find this. A precipitate forms is the first little box. What's a precipitate? A solid, what do you mean? I agree, but what do you mean? Yes, 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 yes. So when you have two ionic compounds, typically in solution, and you mix those together, it looks like rain in the test tube is what this would look like, right? But it's not rain. What's coming out of solution? Uh, heavier, yeah, because it's a solid, sure. But why is it coming out of solution? Why doesn't this happen with just regular table salt? What happens to table salt when you put it in water? It dissolves. So a precipitate is kind of the opposite of that action, right? That would be something that we would say is insoluble or won't dissolve coming out. The second little uh, box on here is a gas is formed. We're going to kind of see how this works here in a few moments. And then lastly is a new molecular species forms, something like water or an acid or a base. So let's try this. Let's do some science. So I'm going to put uh, if I stand like this, am I in the thing? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to put a solution into two different test tubes. There's one. This is an ionic solution. The same thing in both of these test tubes. So let's see if we can talk a reaction into happening. And let me know if you can spot when and if a reaction happens. All right, so solution one plus we'll call it solution two. Anybody see anything happening? Not so much fun, right? Solution one with solution three. Did something happen? Yes. Yes. What number on the screen behind me happened? Two. 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 A gas formed. A gas formed. Well, it just bubbled up. So, yes. A gas. A gas formed. A small mass occurred. And so on and so forth. So, that would have been number two. The key to this is just like in the lab we did last week with our single replacement reactions. How could you tell if one of those was happening, if a single replacement reaction was actually happening? What about the observation, though? Yes, we observed, but what would you observe if something was happening? Give me examples of what those some things were. In your well plates last week, what were the things that might have happened? Color change. New substance forming. Right, some of them turned uh, black in color or seemed to disintegrate. Some of them formed little like crystals on things. I think the, the blue color uh, of the copper sulfate would change to a green or a yellow color. Right? Double replacement is kind of the same. Something precipitating out of solution, some kind of gas forming, or some other kind of chemical forming that is not the two chemicals you put in initially. Right? Here are the steps to write a double replacement reaction. So if we witness something happening, now what? I know this is a lot, but you're going to want to hammer this into your notes. 
I know this is a lot of writing. Are we going to have to start writing that? What? Are we going to have to start writing that little Uh, Yes. Sure. Ready to go? All right. All right. So our two substances uh, were a H C O three plus H three. So these were our two substances: sodium bicarbonate and acetic acid. Now these are all things that you could get to if I wrote the names of them down. Now the names you'll recognize for these two are baking soda and vinegar. But at this point in the game, you guys would call this sodium bicarbonate and acetic acid. But ultimately these are just ionic compounds, are they not? Think about cations and anions. Remember our general format for a double replacement reaction, right? A, B plus B, C, or A, B plus C, D yields A, D plus B, C. So what happens in a double replacement reaction? Remember for a single, the metal would replace a metal or the halogen would replace the halogen. But in a double replacement, we're basically going to flip-flop the cations. And so your yield here, Na, and again, given just those two reactants, you should be able to get to this place on the product side. This is just balancing just balancing charges, right? Sodium's a plus one, acetate's a minus one, hydrogen's a plus one, carbonate's a minus two. You're just Switching these around and rebalancing. And then our second step in balancing, now that we have the actual reactants and products correct, would be to balance this equation. Now the good news here is what? It's already balanced. So we don't have to mess with it. And then the last step on your double replacement, or not last step, which step was it? Where we have to check our purple sheet. What does our purple sheet say about this thing here? Look at your purple sheet up at, up at the tie. See, none of you got your purple sheets out. Get your purple sheets out. Get out your purple sheet. We're on step, what, one, two, three, I guess? This should be step two. Nope, nope, nope. Step two here is to check for these two things. Now we did this five minutes ago. What formed? Gas or some kind of bubbles, right? So, and I know we've talked about it before in class, but what gas forms when you mix vinegar and baking soda together? You guys remember what gas that is? Uh, not monoxide, carbon, carbon dioxide. It forms carbon dioxide. Well, if that's true, where is that over here? I don't see carbon dioxide anywhere. Right? We just did this. It just made carbon dioxide. So where on this right-hand side do we find carbon dioxide? Spoiler alert, we don't. We don't. However, look at rule number two for ionic compounds on your purple sheet. What happens if we form 
In this case, I suppose we could call it hydrogen carbon, uh, carbonate. What happens when that forms? It immediately does what? It decomposes into what? That is where our carbon dioxide is at. So what happens inside this test tube? Where we had that actually happen? This happened. This reaction happened. A double replacement happened. As soon as it formed this, that compound immediately decomposes into two other things. One of them is the carbon dioxide that the, we witnessed. Right? We saw that happen in the test tube. If I'd have told you ahead of time that was baking soda and vinegar, you all would have guessed, oh yeah, it's going to fizz up and make bubbles and whatever. So this is step two, or I guess rule two, on your ionic reaction. So after you would balance an ion a double replacement reaction, you need to check to see if this is one of your products. There's another one on number two, on rule number two on your, on your purple sheet. What other compound do you need to be looking for? H2SO4. If that one gets created, that is going to immediately decompose into what? Water and sulfur dioxide which is also a gas. So on your worksheet that I handed out earlier, ooh, let's talk one, one more thing. I know all of you have been dying to know when we're going to use this giant awful chart on the back side of this purple sheet. You've been anticipating it, wishing for it, hoping Today would be the day, and guess what? Tomorrow. Today is the day. Tomorrow. Nice try. Nice try. No, today is the day. So this is a solubility chart. You can see how you will use this. The metals are listed down on the left, and all of the uh, polyatomics are listed across the right. So you use this to look up the solubility of things that are created. So on your worksheet, the first one listed there is calcium sulfate. Find that on your solubility chart. I know, it's awful. What do we find for calcium sulfate? Partially soluble. So soluble in small amounts only. What's the next one on the worksheet? What's B? NaNO3. What do we call that? Sodium nitrate, indeed. So let's look up sodium nitrate. Sodium nitrate is soluble. You'd have S, soluble. Partial, it's a P. It's partially soluble. Sulfate, calcium sulfate is that one right there. What is that? I would put a P. You could put an S. I mean, it is soluble, partially soluble, it's soluble. <coughs> but I would follow what's on your chart. So again, this is, all right, all right, bring it back in. So this solubility chart is useful for predicting products. If you do a double replacement reaction, you mix two soluble compounds. You, you reverse or switch the cations. It's going to form some different compounds. You need to look them up on this table to determine if they will precipitate out of solution or not. 
So if you run into an I on some product on a double replacement reaction, that is going to tell you that that particular thing is going to form a solid, a little parentheses S behind it, and it will precipitate out of solution. That again is how you're predicting products and using this chart. The top over here, depending on what it is, or maybe the solubility list here, depending on what it is.